Well, we're at the, the, the southerly end of, of Waverley site at the moment, nearest the, nearest the reservoir. Um, and we're conducting a, a load test, which is essentially a six metre high mound of soil that is placed directly upon um, the backfill of the open cast colliery. Um, and the idea is to, is to measure the compression which that stockpile of material, the surcharge, squashes and compresses the existing backfill material. There's two aspects to which we're measuring the compression. One is by a borehole magnetic sensometer, which is the, just in the, the blue pipe in the background, if you can see that. Um, and that measures the compression at different heights throughout the length of the backfill. So from 60 metres, 50 metres, 40 metres, 30 metres, 20, 10, 5, and then ground level. And the, the red poles here, they're settlement pins which are based in concrete onto ground level. This soil is placed around it, as you can see here on the, on the cones. As it comes up to the top of the poles, we put another extension on until it gets to seven and a half metres. Then the, the surcharge will not reach the top of that. We then come along and, and surveyors will survey the top of those pipes. And as that pipe is, uh, or the ground level is, is compressed, that pipe will drop down. And that's what the surveyors will pick up. And you'll hopefully monitor, uh, well, you will monitor compression or, or settlement over time. There's three large low test areas. There's the one here based by the reservoir where the, the water table is, is relatively high and close to the ground surface. There's another two locations to the north end of the site, one situated over the deepest part of the backfill and one approximately in the middle, you know, sort of part way in between. Um, now the upper, the, the upper large low test areas, they have um, access tubes or holes, boreholes drilled through to five metres below ground level and they'll be, they'll be inundated with water once uh, the initial compression has, has been achieved to, to induce a little bit more settlement and to observe what the effect of the rising groundwater table would have on it. We've done close to 60 boreholes and probably a few more because well, we've done some probe holes as well. Um, we've used two different types of rigs. We've used the cable percussion rigs. We've had two of those on site pretty much permanently and we've got a much larger rotary rig. Um, the cable percussion boreholes I've included from 10 metre small holes that we've looked at um, basic contamination, we've took extra samples to get tested at the labs and then we've gone as deep as about I think 80 metres is our deepest borehole. We've done that to install an extensometer which is um, basically a, a pipe work with a series of magnets that will um, monitor any settlement within the ground. Well, if I'm going to sell you a car, I could say to you, this is a very good car. Take my word for it. The mileometer's correct, it's got good tyres, engine's beautiful. You might well take my word for it and buy that car, but these days you probably wouldn't. You'd want to employ a third party, an independent third party, uh, to examine my car to see if it's the car that you want to buy. And really, RSK for us are that, are that third party. We're saying we've got a wonderful piece of land here, it's clean, it's well engineered, it's perfect for building your new houses on. Uh, but nobody's going to take our word for that and of course we wouldn't expect them to and therefore what RSK are doing for us is absolutely crucial it's, uh, they're coming in as a, uh, a recognised, independent, professional, experienced uh, company who are going to examine the site in detail and in depth hopefully at the end of it say this is a good piece of land you can build your houses here it, it's very very important to reassure the market and also to reassure the authorities, the planning authorities, etc., that this is a suitable piece of land to do what we say it can do. So without that validation and without that uh, certification almost, which comes at the end of it, um, we really wouldn't be going anywhere. I think the, the, the added value we can bring is that um, RSK has clearly the combined geotechnical and environmental skills to sort out the problems. But I think it's the fact that they want someone that can work proactively with the rest of the design team. Uh, they don't want to wait until 2011 when they're ready to be starting to sell the site to say, oh, we've got a problem. They want to know at an early stage and they want someone to be identifying problems that can work proactively with a team 
and actually come up with solutions at an early enough stage to be able to solve them.